welcome across Libya. People are still celebrating news that Colonel Muammar Gaddafi is dead after he ruled Libya for 42 years. The former dictator is expected to be buried in a secret location, but there's still a dispute about the location and the timing. A formal announcement of Libya's liberation after his death is expected this weekend. But meanwhile, some controversy continues into the manner of the former dictator's death. Let's go to Tripoli to join Ben Brown. Hello and a very good afternoon to you from Tripoli, where Libyans are continuing to celebrate the death of Colonel Gaddafi and the final end of his 42-year dictatorship. It is uh, expected that he will now be buried in secret, although the National Transitional Council leadership seem to be divided about the exact formalities as to where and how Colonel Gaddafi's body should be disposed of. What will happen this weekend, we're being told, is that the NTC from their headquarters in Benghazi in the East will declare formally that Libya, the whole country, is now liberated after the death of Colonel Gaddafi and the final fall of his loyalists uh, in search. Well, meanwhile, the United Nations are calling for an investigation into the exact circumstances of Colonel Gaddafi's death yesterday. His widow has added her voice to those calls for an inquiry and an investigation into exactly uh, how he died. And meanwhile, the whereabouts of his son, Saif al-Islam, who is uh, thought to be still alive, that's still unknown. Some reports saying that he's on the run, heading south, uh, into the southern areas of Libya, others that he has been wounded and is being treated in hospital. Well, let's get this report now from uh, Wira Davis, who's in Mizrata. I should warn you that some of the images in his report you may find distressing. A couple of containers in a dusty scrapyard in Mizrata, where I today found what remains of a family that used to enjoy privilege and wealth beyond imagination. In this freezer, Muatasim al Gaddafi once his father's most feared son, the former head of internal security, who had a reputation for torture and violence. Libyans are no longer afraid of him. <laughs> Mawatasem was captured alive alongside his father in Sirte. Like Colonel Gaddafi, he was then killed, probably executed by rebel fighters, despite pleas from some for them to be kept alive. Most Libyans don't really care how the Gaddafis were killed or the fact that they're now lying naked and bloodied in a freezer under the hot desert sun. It's an ignominious and inglorious end to a family that ruled this country with an iron grip for 42 years. Overnight the bodies had been kept in the home of a local man. The lifeless corpse of Libya's former leader put on public display to allay any rumours that he might not actually be dead. Because in Libyan people, there is somebody who don't believe the Gaddafi is dead. So you're saying it was important that people saw Gaddafi, yes, were able to yes, touch yes, Gaddafi? Yes, 100%. So the people is coming basically to my house and they want to see it exactly. Is Gaddafi really? Is no any politic? And just to be sure, DNA samples were today being taken from Colonel Gaddafi's body to avoid any confusion. It is perhaps ironic that the bodies have been brought back here to Misrata a town which was relentlessly pounded by Gaddafi's army at the height of the uprising. Amid disagreements over how and where to bury the Gaddafis, they remain for now almost discarded in a cold storage container. Wira Davis, BBC News, Misrata. Well, the latest we're hearing from NATO is that they're, they're saying that when they hit that convoy of vehicles of Gaddafi loyalists, thought to have included Colonel Gaddafi himself, when they hit that with French warplanes uh, yesterday morning, they actually didn't know that Colonel Gaddafi was in that uh, motorcade of many vehicles, uh, several of which were completely destroyed, and many of the people in that uh, motorcade killed. Uh, let's go to Wira Davis, who's live for us now in Misrata. Wira, uh, what exactly is going to happen to the body? What are you hearing about uh, what's being arranged for the funeral, uh, disposing of the body of Colonel Gaddafi? Well, of course, uh, according to Muslim tradition, every effort should be made to bury a body within 24 hours. So the initial expectation was that uh, after Friday prayers here, the bodies of Muammar Gaddafi and his son Watasim would have been buried, perhaps in an unmarked grave somewhere 
in the vicinity of this town, but there has developed uh, a row between the transitional government authorities, uh, many of whom think it would be wrong and difficult to create al almost um, a, a symbol for, for Gaddafi's supporters if he was buried um, because the, the truth would eventually come out. So the, the situation we've got now is nobody's knowing when the Gaddafis are going to be buried, where they're going to be buried, whether they'll be buried here in Misrata or in his hometown, for example, of Sirte, and how that is going to happen. So the Gaddafis are, as we speak, in a cold storage container, and there is uh, something of a, a disagreement amongst the transitional government authorities how to progress from here. Yeah, I guess that doesn't bode too well for the uh, immediate future of Libya if the uh, transitional authorities can't even agree on uh, what to do with Colonel Gaddafi's body. Indeed, but we've seen this before, of course, um, if memory serves me right, Saddam Hussein's body is uh, buried in uh, his hometown of, of Tikrit in Iraq, but it, it's, it's illegal for people to hold uh, congregations or, or events at the grave, but, uh, for example, that, that uh, example could be followed here in Libya, and many people think, um, again, according to Muslim tradition, he should be buried near where his family comes from, um, the Gaddafi tribe, um, near the town of, of Sirte. So there are many disagreements going on, and it does perhaps, you're quite right, it does highlight the many problems between um, the new Libyan authorities, particularly regional uh, di differences between people from Benghazi, people from Sirte, and people from Tripoli. And these are exactly the kind of things, now the fighting's over, of course, the transitional government has got to start and do, rebuild the country and build some sort of political process that can take Libya forward. And where, what's the mood, what's the atmosphere there like today? I mean, Misrata saw so much really ferocious fighting in this civil war, but uh, has it uh, sunk in yet that Colonel Gaddafi is actually dead? Indeed, but we, I don't think we've seen the, the wild celebration here. Of course, uh, the happiest moment for the people of Misrata is when they won their, their town back after a very bitter battle which cost hundreds of lives. And the, the overwhelming uh, feeling and sentiment you get here is, is that people now definitely want to move on. This town needs rebuilding well, physically. Uh, the main street, Tripoli Street, is in ruins because it bore the brunt of so much of the fighting. So people here are very keen uh, to put the fighting officially behind them to get on uh, with not just the uh, physical rebuilding but the political process uh, of elections both for a local level uh, uh, the sort of presidential level in, in perhaps in two years time and then before that um, there'll be some be parliamentary elections so uh, i think there really is here uh, there isn't that sense of euphoria that you've seen perhaps in, in Tripoli over the last 24 hours Okay, Wera, thank you very much indeed. That's Wera Davis with the latest from now. I think we can just show you some live pictures now of people there in Misrata queuing uh, to see the body of Colonel Gaddafi as Wera was uh, describing it, a rather undignified end for him to be in this rather macabre way, just lying in a freezer, uh, pretty much naked as people file past, queue up and file past all very anxious, very curious to take a look at the man who had ruled them with such terror for so many years, for 42 years. And uh, as we were hearing then, now Libya preparing to make that transition to democracy after four decades of dictatorship, and clearly it won't be easy. But uh, in the short term, as we were hearing questions about what to do exactly with Colonel Gaddafi's body that those people are queuing up to see, uh, where to bury it, whether to bury it in secret so that uh, it cannot be any kind of shrine for any of his loyalists or his supporters and equally uh, people who hate him don't come and desecrate the grave. A lot of questions for the uh, National Transitional Council that they don't seem to have quite come up with the answers to yet and also questions about how exactly Colonel Gaddafi was killed. The UN are asking for an inquiry and his widow is also, Colonel Gaddafi's widow is also saying that she wants a full investigation into the circumstances of exactly how he died, whether he was executed or whether he died of injuries that he had sustained earlier. So there you are, people queuing now, a really extraordinary sight to see the body of the man who was the dictator for four decades. Well, meanwhile, NATO and their leaders are meeting in Brussels at the moment to decide how and when exactly to wind up the NATO 
uh, campaign here of military action that uh, they would say has been so successful. Not a single NATO casualty in something like 26,000 sorties that were flown, 26,000 missions uh, flown over Libya. Let's get this report from our diplomatic correspondent James Robbins. Gunfire not in anger but in triumph. Tripoli partied through the night celebrating the downfall and death of a dictator. After 42 years of Gaddafi, there's bound to be a pause for celebration. The pressure is growing now on the new leadership to get on with the immense task of building a different Libya. Already the foreign leaders who drove NATO's campaign are looking beyond military action. Nous les avons aidés. We help them. We will continue to help them for as long as they consider they need us. The operation is coming to its end, inevitably, and it's really up to the Libyans to build their future, not us. And NATO governments, including Britain and France, meet in Brussels today to decide when and how to end operations. Finally, Libya can close this long, dark chapter in its history and turn over a new page. NATO and its partners have successfully implemented the United Nations mandate to protect the people of Libya. We will terminate our mission in coordination with the United Nations and the National Transitional Council. And that moment has now moved uh, much closer. Expect to see more of this now. Big political figures like Hillary Clinton, who was in Tripoli on Tuesday, and today is urging Libya to press ahead with its own timetable towards elections. It is our hope that what I saw in Tripoli on Tuesday, uh, firsthand the eagerness of Libyans to begin building a new democracy, uh, can now begin in earnest. But there are other prizes from victory, financial ones both for Libyans and the governments who did most to support them. The country's energy sector was battered by fighting but far from destroyed and Britain's new defence secretary is already urging British businesses to pack their bags and get involved. There will be opportunities for British business as Libya uh, seeks to rebuild uh, the nation. We've taken great care during the campaign uh, to avoid destroying critical infrastructure. Libya is a relatively wealthy country with uh, oil reserves and I expect that there will be opportunities for British and indeed other uh, com companies uh, to get involved in the reconstruction of Libya. Amid the partying, this was Benghazi reacting to Colonel Gaddafi's death. Few Libyans are focusing yet on how to prolong their present happiness and unity. How to ensure that freedom is built into their collective future. But that is the immense challenge now. James Robbins, BBC News. Well, just to update you on the latest from that NATO meeting in Brussels, we're hearing that NATO's top operations commander has said that uh, there will be a recommendation that operations are concluded, are wound up. We don't have, actually have a time scale for that, whether that's within hours or days. But uh, we're expecting a news conference at NATO within the next uh, hour or so. So in the short term, for the transitional council leadership, uh, questions now about what to do with Colonel Gaddafi's body. In the longer term, the big challenge is how to make this uh, extraordinary transition from four decades of dictatorship to democratic elections, free and fair elections within two years. It won't be easy. That's the latest from Tripoli. Back now to you in the studio in London.